Perfect. So now we're recording. Yes. <laughs> so hi, Yitzke. Welcome to Muto Studio. Um, today we're recording our interview and we're talking about new initiatives um, and especially during these strange times for all of us. And so you are uh, art director, you work with uh, videography and photography as well. And yeah, could you please introduce yourself, uh, yourself and tell us what you do? Yeah, thank you so much uh, for inviting me. Yeah, I'm uh, Jitz Knapp. Um, I live in Amsterdam and I work in uh, photography, videography, art direction. And I think um, what glues it all together is that I specialize in nightlife, yeah, in the music industry, like fashion relates to that. So I think that's kind of like nightlife culture. Yeah. That's my, my niche. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's also what we're focusing on um, for this interview. Would you like to first um, tell us what your background is? So I see, I saw that you studied at Amphi. Um, so what, how did you start? Was it maybe an interest that you had already as a child, like photography and video? Um, yeah, actually, I was, was I was supposed to go to medical school, oh. <laughs> uh, but I was <laughs> really into fashion. But I thought, yeah. oh, I will never get into um, fashion school or anything. But I only, I was like, okay, let's apply just for one school, Amphi, and then I got in. So I uh, signed out for the, the lottery system for medical school because here you have a lottery system, and if you don't take your spot, then you're not allowed to enter anymore for five years so I was like let's try fashion if mm -hmm. I don't like it I can always switch back and then I really enjoyed it and um, so I stayed and after fashion and design I interned in uh, New York at V magazine and there I did styling and then I saw the, like hey styling it's not really my thing um, the, the role of the photographer that's uh, that look uh, much better you know <laughs> And uh, so when I came back in the Netherlands, I um, started uh, with photography. And I also thought if I have styling projects, at least I can take my own pictures. Because often if I did, when I did styling, then I wasn't really satisfied with the pictures or not satisfied with the retouching. So I wanted to have like all control. Yeah. yeah. And then I uh, started with um, uh, shooting in the Amsterdam party scene. And eventually I um, ran into Raymond van Mil, who was uh, the photo editor at Vice and he asked me if I wanted to shoot for Vice as well and then Vice gave me credibility so people starting to hire me sure yeah so yeah mm -hmm. now so we're here did you have uh, like a mentor do you, during your studies or someone who guided and inspired you no not really I mean I met like really cool people along the way so I wouldn't say I had a mentor per se but yeah, I had like a really, some really cool internships and I still talk to the people I interned with. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe like maybe multiple mentors yeah. or maybe yeah. not even someone you know. I really love to watch like YouTube videos from inspiring people. And uh, if I have a bad day, then I watch a YouTube yeah. video. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you're basically quite multidisciplinary uh, in your work um, because you use different media and uh, you you approach your work uh, in different ways. Also, what what is the value behind it? Uh, yeah, for me, it keeps me motivated and uh, it challenges me to try something new. Like for example, now I'm doing styling again, and I hadn't done it for for a while, and if I would do styling every day, then I w w it would be boring, you know. But since, yeah, I'm, I do all these different things, it's always something new. And uh, I think that works for me, it works really well. And since I have like a certain field I operate in, like like nightlife, musicians, fashion, that's, that's all like connected. Yeah. You know, so then you have all these layers that build on top of each other. Yeah. Like for example, if you do a photo shoot and someone else is doing the styling, because I have so much knowledge about styling or uh, creating a concept, I can really like help other people and I really understand what they are dealing with. Yeah, sure. I think it's also quite important for a role like you being able to like be sort of multifaceted. Yeah. Uh, in your work as well to advise others and to have like the eye for the thing yeah 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 i feel that for me it's beneficial but maybe other people really like to focus on one thing and 
Yeah. Be the best in one specific. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What about videography? Because I saw that you started uh, recently with it and you had also your first uh, video releases and uh, tell us um, about that. Yeah, um, I wanted to do video for a long time already, but doing video is like a lot of work. And then I had some done some like little projects and then Eva van Mane asked me in the summer of 2019 if I wanted to do her a music video. So we came up with a, with a concept. She already had like a really beautiful album cover that was photographed by someone else. And so we used that picture as an inspiration for the whole music video to have the same um, vibe. So yeah, me and Eva, we did basically everything mm -hmm. together. And we had some like amazing uh, makeup artists and uh, hair hairstylists. And uh, we had uh, someone helping us with the choreography for the dancers. So um, yeah, and me and Eva, we decided on like the looks. And I had a really cool um, studio at the time, it was this building in Wester Park. It's not there anymore. It was an old school, but it also was an embassy. like. It was anti crack and now the building is gone so it's really yeah. nice because no one can ever reproduce mm -hmm. yeah this yeah this visual these mm -hmm. visuals again mm -hmm. so you're liking your new this new path yeah, yeah actually i should practice a bit more on video but yeah, yeah I, don't, i don't really have time at the moment but i yeah. hope to do more uh, yeah i bet that it's completely different from like the medium of photography And it's uh, still related, but very different in some way also. Yeah, yeah. Everyone was like, oh, it will be super easy for you. Um, it's it's hard. Yeah. It's it's yeah. a lot of different factors. And uh, yeah, you really have to... I When I just started, I felt I had the same feeling of, about the technique as when I started with photography. There was... And once it, it's when you, once you know all these things, it's normal. Yeah, it becomes like a habit. Yeah, it's a habit. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And now I'm at a level that I can easily easily switch. Like, um, oh, this frame rate. Oh, that frame rate. Oh, then I need to adjust so and so. But there's still like a lot to learn for me. So. Yeah, yeah. And what about uh, photography? So, what do you love about photography? Um, yeah, it's an amazing excuse to go to like <laughs> the best places, yeah. to, um, to to let the people invite you into their houses. Like if you ask like a cool artist, hey, I would love to do a photo shoot, and then suddenly you're at their house. It's yeah. If I, you would never do that. Um, you would never just ask someone, hey, can yeah. I come in your house yeah. just to <laughs> look around? And if you uh, do portraits of people, you create a bond in a really short amount of time because it's such a personal um, project is also vulnerable to be photographed so in the first 15 minutes are always a nightmare and then once it has this click once the yeah once it flows then um, then it's amazing yeah yeah that's also something i wanted to touch upon like what about your subjects um i think it's very interesting what you were saying now about creating this bond and like overcoming maybe the first awkward minutes, <laughs> like when being photographed. Um, but yes, how do you really connect with your subjects or what do they tell you also? Um, yeah, I just ask them like a lot of questions. I do just like, and that's where I would say, Vraag of you. Yeah. Inspiring <laughs> all these questions. Yeah. And then they're distracted. And. Uh, Yeah, I, th I think that's, that's my trick. Yeah, so you try to not make them sort of uncomfortable in front of the camera because I yeah. guess it's uh, something that not every one of us uh, is used to, <laughs> being mm. in front of the lens. Yeah, definitely. So. Yeah, and also, like, I always say, like, hey, if you don't want to do something, don't feel pressured to do, like, you know, you can um, yeah. let me know yeah. if you're uncom uncomfortable or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And you had uh, an interesting project that is uh, women in non-traditional jobs that you did a few years ago. And uh, I would like to talk about it in order to um, to see how photography can help portraying also um, people and the environment, the public spaces as well. So 
Could you talk to me about it? Um, yeah, I was asked for this project by um, the Dutch embassy in Cuba. And um, a Cuban photographer did a series about um, the women in non-traditional jobs. And then they want to have an expo at International Women's Day and they want to have a Dutch um, variant as of, uh, of it as well. So they asked me to do it. And yeah, it was so much fun because I got to go to all these uh, to, with these women to yeah. their jobs so he was driving a whole day with, uh, with this lady who was a milk truck driver and uh, yeah that's that's also the thing what i like photography mm -hmm. so much you have an excuse to do all these yeah. cool things yeah and, uh, go to these amazing places yeah and it's yeah and i think it's it's nice to like for example non-traditional jobs you don't there are not a lot of people who do something like that and um yeah, I think it's cool to show to like maybe young girls that you can also do something out of the ordinary. Yeah. You don't have to be. Um, you can be a truck driver if you want to be a truck yeah, driver. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. And how did how was the the response uh, to this project? Yeah, it was was a lot of uh, like really positive response, and yeah, it was really nice to go to Cuba and uh, show the work there and. Um, yeah, it was, um, yeah, but making it was a lot of fun and people really enthusiastic about it. Yeah. So do you think uh, photography is like w the best medium to maybe portray such things and deliver like s strong messages as this one? Um, yeah, maybe video, photography. Um, yeah, but I could also imagine that if you are... Um, painter that you would paint maybe something that can be powerful as well yeah it yeah. just depends I yeah yeah i still think um photography is like so visual and impactful um because it so somehow communicates without words yeah so i also think that's a wonderful uh, feature of photography yeah like a picture says more than a thousand yeah, words yeah so exactly uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, but also really love it when you have a story, like when you have some text next to a picture, because a lot of, I feel a lot of photographers, it's not something they think about doing. And once you know the story behind the picture, it says a lot more. Yeah, I saw that you're doing that a lot, like telling, I'd it's like oh, you have a, a whole narrative uh, behind your pictures. Yeah, I try to do that. I have a foundation with like, uh, five other women um, and we as a native agency we uh, support photojournalists from underrepresented regions like Africa, South America, Middle East and that what I learned there is to do really work on the texts when um, we have some like Laura for example she started the foundation and she uh, works in photojournalism she's an editor and that's what I learned from her that, uh, work on your text yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think it also gives a whole idea and background to the picture, and you can also maybe use it as a way to engage more with your yeah. public. Also, yeah, yeah. I think for me, I I'm dyslexia, and uh, like photography is also a way to get out of yeah. writing text. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You can never really escape it. Yeah, but great. Yeah, that shows like a. Like we said before, like an image tells so much more, yeah. and yeah. And then um, I think also uh, talking now that we're talking about photography, um, could you tell us since you're, you're saying that you started working with night culture and in clubs also, um, could you talk to me about your project uh, Stille Nacht? Oh and yeah, it also won an award and uh, got pretty a lot of attention as well. So yeah, it's uh, how it started. Yeah, it uh, it started in the beginning of the pandemic, and then there were these first like weeks, everyone was making these beautiful videos of the empty streets of Amsterdam, and I was like, oh my god, I should do something as well. I'm behind. I was like, okay, calm down. Yeah maybe you should find something that's a bit closer to your like heart than just the streets of Amsterdam. So I started uh, uh, just taking pictures of the outside of the clubs. I drove around Amsterdam with a friend of mine um, 
Dennis, uh, his DJ name is uh, Roxon, and um, uh, he drove me around the city on a scooter. And like at the time, there would be normally a line line outside of yeah. the club. So uh, when after that, I was like, hey, I should do the inside as well. So I contact all the, all the clubs, and I started doing uh, taking pictures of the inside. And then a um, friend of mine, Casper Streetman, who normally draws, paints DJs when they're performing, he was now painting the inside of the club. So then we started doing this project together. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it gave me a lot of joy. Yeah. Suddenly well, the whole pandemic wasn't there anymore when you have a schedule. And you yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how, how was it for you um, as a photographer, um, like, yeah, almost a year ago? Um, how how was it like living this sudden uh, silence, emptiness of streets? Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Also a, a unique opportunity, of course. Mm-hmm. But also, yeah, also you don't know really what to do with it yet. Um, yeah, it's it's hard because you don't you have all these. I was really I was actually really proud of myself that I did a lot of uh, acquisiti for the new festival season, and then. Every week you see, oh, I was supposed to go there. Yeah. <laughs> I was supposed to go there. But yeah, I think that project, um, like taking pictures of the clubs and these things really saved me. And um, yeah, that was actually a lot of work. So uh. Yeah. So you basically just so took pictures of empty rooms and of these clubs that almost don't look like yep. clubs. They are... Um, portrayed in such a different way once the lights are on or once you yeah. photograph them during daytime how how did you feel in there yeah it was so strange it was like it's it's just yeah the lights really create the atmosphere yeah. they make the club yeah. much bigger than it actually is all these clubs are really small and yeah it was so interesting to see what absence does with a building mm. and uh, i mean i've been when before the party started I've been in the club as a photographer but without the lights on without the idea that the party will start soon or something it's it's really different yeah and yeah also uh, fascinating to see because as a if you just go to the club as a party goer you don't really see all the people that work behind the scenes to make this happen how much blood the swan and tears people uh, put into it yeah and yeah, also the history of the buildings is fascinating how old some of the buildings are um yeah like the milk is an old milk milk factory and uh, like the vestergas is really uh, really old and you're like oh my god so much heritage there and yeah uh, yeah, yeah exactly so how um what are some other names um, and some other clubs you you photographed that were particularly significant for you? Um, yeah, Paradiso. Mm-hmm. I think my first photography, nightlife photography gig was there. So, and I saw the beautiful wooden ceiling in Paradiso. It's a green ceiling, I never noticed. Yeah, <laughs> you noticed. never see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, warehouse, I really love, I really love the people from Nachtlab. I used to have an uh, office there, so that's yeah, always uh, really nice to be there. Yeah, here at Brett, also uh, a lot of fun and the people are so sweet carrying out the tables and yeah. making sure I got the perfect shot. Um, yeah, I think like um, Mark Cantina was really fun to be, um, Radion mm-hmm. was great, yeah. I mean, at all the clubs are nice and all the people yeah. are amazing, so, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Supper Club. Yeah, it was also really nice to be there. Um, oh my God, I'm <laughs> maybe forgetting. Yeah, a whole so. <laughs> list to have. That's a, yeah, that's yeah. a big project you made, actually. Yeah, yeah. So very... Uh, oh yeah, the Jimmy Woo. <laughs> yeah, so this shows that also Amsterdam has a very rich uh, night culture and club culture. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you feel it has been a bit neglected during these times? Um, yeah. How, yeah, I mean, I, I can't really l- look at people's bank accounts, but what I've, what I've heard, there's not a lot of support from the government for nightlife. And uh, yeah, I think there should be also, for example, 
that's why when I was at the Knicks, I was talking to the owner about it. Like, oh, you meet, like, the stories people have. Oh, I met my boyfriend or now my husband. They will never say, hey, I, I, I met them in the supermarket. It's always yeah. at this party and it was the best music and it was such a beautiful night. And I think it's, there's so much value in night culture, what people don't really see or people that don't go out anymore see or maybe, yeah. Yeah, it's almost as if we're all not used to it anymore. Yeah, it's a yeah, bit strange, yeah. but yeah. Um, it's almost as if yeah, this part has been erased um, from our yeah. lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I thought it's also interesting when you uh, said you, that you also met people that work behind the scenes. So people that usually you don't see when you go to a club. How how was it meeting those people and seeing that? There's so much behind night culture. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, for me, it felt really rich, you know, really like a privilege to meet these people. Like they're really entrepreneurs, and um, yeah, I think having a night, like running a nightclub, is yeah. I think you need to have balls to <laughs> to run a club, definitely. So yeah, it felt really like a privilege to uh, to meet all these really nice people, and everyone was so nice, like really supportive and easy going and welcoming so yeah so that's yeah a nice aspect also to see that there's so much so much behind it actually and that it uh, this particular period has impacted so many people so not only yeah. the venues but all the people behind it and um, so I think that like with your project you kind of showed that there's a whole yeah. wor world uh, behind the club, like yeah, behind yeah. the like four walls <laughs> yeah, yeah, of a yeah. club. Yeah. Mm. And then also, um, like this project was also awarded. And how was also in this case, how was the response? Uh, what's the impact uh, you want to make with this project? Um, yeah, it's, it started like just as basic hate therapy for myself and uh, then I was like, hey, this is a project that could be suitable for like a publication or uh, maybe an award. So I sent it in for the Club Photography uh, Award Talent 2021 and then they always select a group of people and I was with one of the, one of the hundred people they selected. So. Uh, yeah, that was really nice, and we had a little expo, but that was cancelled. So uh, also due, of, of course. Yeah, yeah. It was luckily yeah. I was able to go there myself, but uh, that was just a couple of days, and then they had to close it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the uh, publication in the FD, it was really nice. I heard a lot of people called me like, "Yes, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> let's see your work." And, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's really cool. Mm -hmm. So, what about some of your favorite pictures of this project? Um, yeah, it's hard. To, I think I like the one from Thuishaven a lot. That's a lot of people. It's also really cool to see which pictures people like. And yeah, I think Thuishaven is one of the best. Somehow that really works and uh, it, I took it in the big circus tent. And then you have the word circus. And uh, yeah, no, it's, it's pink, so it pops. Um, I also really like the picture of the Mark Cantina. That was one of the first I did. Um, Jimmy Wu. Yeah, I also mm -hmm. really liked, yeah. It's so hard to choose. Yeah, I know. <laughs> did you go there um, during daytime or nighttime? Um, yeah, mostly daytime. I mean, the pictures I took outside, that was during the night but um, normally like office hours. So, yeah, so yeah. that's also <laughs> yeah, yeah. interesting to go there during yeah, night time. Yeah. Sorry, during daytime, yeah, yeah indeed. Yeah. yeah, and the clubs don't really have, like, except from the Western Uni, they don't really have windows, so it just doesn't matter if you, do have a yeah. <coughs> if you are there yeah. during the day or night time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And um, where are the works? Where can you see now your photographs? Um, they're on my website. Um, yeah, and um, we are working on an expo with more photographer, uh, more with more uh, nightlife creatives. 
but we're not sure when we can do that yet yeah. because it's like multidisciplinary. I would love to do an expo that um, <coughs> looks back at uh, this, what artists did, light life related artists did with this time. Yeah, exactly. And um, so since we're talking about like the these, of course, tough times and this uh, sort of, yeah, we could define it crisis that we're living in right now. Um, do you feel that in this particular sector, so in the, in the nightlife, do you feel that there is more a sense of defeat or like resilience, wanting to get out of this or to do new initiatives? And <clears throat> what was I, the feeling? Yeah, you I mean, I can only speak for myself. Yeah, sure. I, I think I'm pretty resilient <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, I'm working now on a movie that's it's about this topic as well. So yeah, actually I'm feeling really good and um, strong and uh, so, but yeah, yeah, I think the, most people around me have the same attitude. So I, c I can, I, but I also can imagine that people will feel really defeated and uh, I can totally get that. Yeah, but we could say like as a general statement that sort of, being creative can really help yeah. i think like our own well-being like even in our small little bubble but also yeah. working and being engaged with creativity as, as a job yeah. also helps to kind of always try and cross boundaries and go beyond and find new inspiration yeah and also like gather people around you that are like-minded that want to do a project with you for example if i had to do photograph all the clubs by myself now i did a friend of mine was painting the clubs i was photographing them then we could go together that was also that made it much easier you know find a partner in crime yeah yeah i think that's also quite important yeah yeah to not be alone so trying to find yeah and also good. it keeps you um how do you say that? That you have, when you have an appointment with someone else, you have to go. Mm -hmm. And if I told all these nightclub owners I was going to publish it. I could just couldn't like stop with the project and like neglect it. I yeah. had to finish it. Yeah. And, and uh, when you do a project, I don't know, there, there comes a moment that you're like, eh, I don't know what to do with it anymore. It's difficult. I'm, I don't like it anymore. And then you, if you have appointments with other people, then you have to push through. Mm -hmm. So is it, what kept you motivated is the fact that you were going to publish it or something else? Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's a mix. Uh, it's um, like taking the step to get it published is scary and that's the, often the moment I want to run away and not do it anymore. Um, or, you, or if when you have to wait or something, you don't know if they gonna publish it or not or uh, and you think like should I follow up or not then this moment comes like maybe she just yeah I think it's a mix it's also because I know how happy I'm gonna be if when it's finished you know yeah. if I don't finish it it will always be this thing like this burden yeah like of course yeah that project that I didn't mm -hmm. finish mm -hmm. yeah 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 but even though it started as like your personal, yeah. let's say, need to go out uh, and do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. but I was taking pictures of other people's spaces. So then you have a creative responsibility to do something with it because they take the time to let you in, like clean out the whole, <laughs> yeah. clean out the whole club yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Why, um, why the choice of photographing like the spaces and not the people? Um, yeah, it started with like the empty streets. So it was I wanted to, to um, portray the emptiness and also I wanted to work a little bit on my um, on, like photographing architecture, like buildings, how I, I, most, I mostly photograph people. So it was like, Hey, it would be cool if to really practice a little bit more on like interiors and architecture, like learn a new skill or improve a skill. Mm -hmm. So uh, now I'm thinking like, hey, it would be cool to do something with the people as well. 
Yeah, for example, yeah, and maybe seeing like you were you taught uh, all this inspiration from the people behind yeah. these clubs and yeah, these yeah. places. Yeah, I'm working uh, on a concept for it, but yeah, it's a lot of t it takes a lot of time to get that started. Yeah. So yeah, but first I'm gonna finish what I'm doing now, and then the new project. Yeah, what are you doing now? So <laughs> uh, I'm working on a Any short film. Yeah. With um, trip writer Asha Medina and uh, producer uh, Julia Rombaut. Um, Asha is a friend of mine. I told him about the series, photography series of the Empty Nightclubs, and then he was like, "Hey, can we uh, do a short film in um, an empty nightclub?" I was like, "Sure." <laughs> so that's uh, how it started, and he wrote a script for it. It's like a romantic uh, horror story. Mm -hmm involving a club owner and a really strict um, pro strict rules politician mm -hmm. and um, i'm doing styling and a bit of art direction for the movie so yeah we're going to shoot it next week at radium okay so you're all focusing like on real places yeah, as well. yeah 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 so yeah it's super excited because i n never did a movie before so. mm -hmm. yeah so uh, will the goal be the same, like portraying these times and like empty clubs? Um, or yeah, it yeah, yeah. It's like portraying these times, showing both sides of the coin, you know. The, um, yeah, like the mixed feelings about, about this time. On the other hand, people that are like... We need to. We want to open. Like we want to want to open the clubs again. And on the other hand, people are like, no, we should keep them closed because of the virus. So this um, the tension yeah. between those uh, groups. Yeah. That's what it is about. And also to show like what a what a club means to someone. You know, like what I was al already saying. Like how much love and energy people put into their. It's, it's their life's work often the uh, nightclub yeah yeah i think also like seeing the the photographs can be a nice point of discussion between people like you said this tension yeah um are there people standing behind it or are people uh, against clubs maybe reopening so it can be an interesting starting yeah. point yeah. for all of us yeah and also i think having like the way of using film and like you said the narrative also behind it to tell a story uh, is yeah. also yeah it's a dream important. come true to work yeah. on this uh, because yeah usher is so talented yeah normally he writes for mocha mafia so he knows how to tell uh, mm -hmm. like a yeah a scary story <laughs> nice so looking forward to it yeah. <laughs> are you also planning to um extend this project um, beyond Amsterdam, maybe other cities in the Netherlands or internationally? Um, I don't have plans yet, but I mean, if someone hears this interview, you hit me up, I'm <laughs> open to anything. Yeah. So um, I talked to a guy that was um, created an Instagram page with pictures of clubs all around the world that are empty. Mm -hmm. And he is from yeah, somewhere in Eastern Europe. So I thought that was a really nice initiative. I sent him some pictures of mine as well for his yeah. page. And uh, I talked to a guy from LA. He did a photography series about vinyl and his inspiration was like the process of going to the record store that you pick up um, um, a record and then someone else puts and then you put it back and someone else Perhaps it because you just looked at it, yeah. you know, that yeah. process. And now in these times, like touching something that someone else touched before, that you can't even think about. Yeah, it. true. Going through the records in, uh, anymore. There's mm. a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. So such a shift happened, uh, especially in this, uh, yeah, in the entertainment industry in general that has been really yeah. hardly hit. Yeah. But yeah. So photography can really be a way of saying, here we are, <laughs> yeah. let's say, yeah. And any future plans, generally mm. speaking? Um, yeah, first finish the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I can't think beyond the movie. Yeah, and I hopefully we can organize a, a multidisciplinary group expo. 
and um, yeah, I think that's that's my main goal for now. And um, when the movie's done, I'm gonna think about new projects again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have? Um, could you like reveal us a release date of this movie? Do you already know? Um, no, we don't right. know yet. We, yeah, we we will shoot it next week. I think. We're planning to finish it in the spring, but that's um, that's it. If mm-hmm. there are no like things setbacks or uh, yeah, you never know how it goes. Yeah, yeah, nice. Okay, so looking forward for the movie and have a look at the Nitz pic- pictures. And yes, I don't know if you want to add something more. Yeah, thank and you. For yeah, it was lovely to have you here. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's always such a warm place to be here at Brett and uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you so much.